G'day, Glenn here, Monster Guitars. Um, I'm still working on this SG style guitar and I'm making some good progress. Parts of this video are, are pretty ordinary. I'm routing out some body cavities like the um, pickup and the rear control cavity. It's a bit dusty just now. But I will show you in this video a really neat little jig that I have put together for routing the neck pocket break angle. Yeah, it's quite clever. The tail piece that I'm using here is basically a copy of uh, a TP6 which has the fine tuning adjusters there on the tailpiece. The way that I've drilled for the tailpiece studs has made this a really, really tight fit, uh, which, you know, is, is permissible, but not necessarily ideal, but it will go on. I know that I'll just give it a gentle tap, gentle-ish, <laughs> with a soft hammer, and that's on. Um, Another way to, to have done that would be, in fact, I'll demonstrate just to show that it can be done, would be to loosen off, loosen out these studs. And I'll need to demonstrate. Uh, of course, if you've got it completely wrong and the distance is, is way off, then then I'm sorry, there's no helping you. <laughs> You're going to have to plug those up and re-drill, which is a big pain. But if it's just a hair's breadth off like these ones seem to be then you can fumble everything like I am put the bridge onto those what do you call those? Those aren't the studs they're the something onto the thingies and then adjust it downwards like so and you'll eventually get to the right place the thing about the TP6, the, um, the anchors for the strings hang a bit loose until, or hang completely loose until there's actually a string on them. That's just the way they're designed. And we will eventually get down to the right height, but I'm not going to do it because it's a lot of screwing. Uh, okay, so hardware check. I've got the well, hardware bridge check. I've got that all drilled. I'm not famous enough to ever, well, not yet anyway, be sponsored by anyone. So everything I use, I've bought and paid for. Uh, so I'm not getting paid when I say this, but these are really good. They are acrylic, clear acrylic um, routing templates for pickups. It, it just doesn't look clear because the, there is still protective paper on there that I haven't taken off yet. But trust me, it is clear, clear acrylic. And they're made by a company called, and I'm not even sure how to say it because I've only ever seen it written down, Cache or Cache. But they're great. Um, I've gone ahead and started this one without you seeing, but you can watch me do the next one if you want to. It's not that exciting. I used them on my previous build, on the last one, the um, the Viper, that green guitar, and they just worked very well. Obviously, this one is still in its packet because I haven't used it yet, uh, but I will at some point. I've got a whole bunch of different shapes for humbuckers and single coils and P90s, both the cavities in the body or the holes in a, in a pick guard, if you're using that. So they make them all. <laughs> So I actually forgot, <laughs> but now I'm reminded that I have already in the body under this top routed some cable channels, which is helpful.
I don't recall the actual diameter of that router bit, but it's fairly large. Uh, generally, I like to use larger bits. They give you a, I don't know, it feels easier to use. I was going to say smoother cut. That's not quite what, what I was trying to say. But the thing about using a large bit or even just a, a fairly ordinary size bit is that the corners of a humbucker cavity are a little bit tighter than a large bearing like that can manage. So what I bought, and it was a little bit pricier than, than most bits, actually I have to pack it over here just because I'm messy, made by Amana and it's a quarter inch shank and it also has a quarter inch cutting bit on it and, and this is the unusual thing, a quarter inch bearing. So it's a mini pattern bit, which is just perfect for cutting around those tight corners. So I, I use a large bit to do the bulk of it and then I just finish off those corners with that just like that. I'm routing the rear control cavity. Sometimes you'll hear people, not often, but sometimes I have anyway, heard people talk about using small trimming routers like this one and how you shouldn't do it when you're routing cavities in the body because, well, they're not really powerful enough. Firstly, actually they are quite powerful. Well, some of them are anyway. This one certainly is by Makita. And secondly, if you've done your due diligence, you won't be actually removing you won't actually be removing much wood with the router anyway. You will have moved just about all of the wood with a, a Forstner bit on a drill press and you're just trimming off very small amounts of remaining wood using this trimmer router. So it should be more than powerful enough for this purpose and that's what I'm doing and that's what I've taken to doing in general when it comes to cavities in the body. Uh, and when I'm routing cavities like this, I use a type of bit that has a flat bottom with a blade across the bottom. It's sometimes called a bottom cleaning bit, sometimes called a milling bit, but it just produces a nice flat smooth surface on the bottom of the cavity that you're writing out. Now because this guitar has a tunematic style bridge which sits up fairly high, um, I need to put in a back angle onto the neck, uh, a neck break angle as it's usually referred to. Um, there are a, a couple of ways of, of getting this done. I've shown you one before that I blatantly stole from Ben Crow, who probably, I think he said he stole it from someone who works with him, um, where you can set things up so that you've got the plane at the right angle and you manage to plane uh, the right back angle. I'm I'm trying something that I haven't seen anyone else do, but I'm, I've no doubt at all that there are people who do something like this because it just seems kind of obvious. I've created a box and that distance is 30 centimeters, but that end is one centimeter higher than that end. So 30 across, one down, and that gives me an angle a declining angle at about three degrees. Which is pretty much the um, neck break angle that I want here. And on lots of guitars that have a um, tunematic style bridge, you would get a three degree neck break angle. And oh, my battery is not in my router just now, but I'm just demonstrating. The router will sit here and it will route an otherwise flat surface into a three degree angle. Now, I'll move the camera and show you. This hole through which the router bit pokes is larger than any neck pocket. The bearing on the router bit will ride on whatever sized neck pocket you've got here. So it's really just a way of elevating the router above the cavity and getting it to move at the right angle. So, let's do this. Now, I 
won't show you the whole process. That may or may not be deep enough yet, but there is now a roughly three degree back angle in that neck pocket. There was no cutting being done up that end, and it started to cut deeper and deeper as the bit approached the end of the body. I don't suppose this has been a very long video. I'll know soon when I edit it, but this seems like a good natural place to pause. I've got all the cavities that I need in the body. Um, in the next video, I will probably finish the guitar uh, because all I really need to do now is put all the contours and bevels onto the body where they belong, carve the neck, which you've seen before, but I'll probably show you a montage of me doing that just so you'll know I did it, and then put the, oh no, 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 because I've got to put the electronics in. I've also got to decide on a finish, but I'll probably be able to squeeze all that into the next video. So, until then.